This is Twit. Right now, joining us, co-founder and CEO of Augment TV, Eye Candy Labs, Robin Show Moser is on the line with us. Hello, Robin. How's it going, Robin? Hi there. Hi, Jason. Hi, Leo. I so, half expect you to jump out of the TV because that's kind of... No, not well, yet. Okay. <laughs> right. Someday soon, right? <laughs> so uh, so let's talk with the tech. This is... I, I can't remember a time that we've... We've seen augmented reality, of yeah. course, but I've never seen it on TV, like watching TV and then seeing it. Tell us how this works. Yeah, so we have developed a technology that is able to pick up um, the TV and what you're watching, and then it will show you augmented reality content that is uh, matching to whatever you see on TV. So Does it have to case, be live? No, no, it works with any type of videos. So it could be either pre-produced or it could be live. Oh. So in this case, you see uh, there are bubbles coming out of the TV screen and the fishes, um, they're becoming real. So they are literally swimming inside your living room so you can move Whoa! around. Whoa, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Now, how does it, is and, there is there a hidden signal in the video that, that you're... Oh. Not at all, because of course um, that, that's Whoa. one of uh, the approaches so far to put something into the audio or, or video feed right. um, that then a technology would pick up, but not the human senses. But uh, we rely completely on a different technology. It's a computer vision technology where we um, process the video um, and then we know what you're watching. So it and recognizes is, it. Yeah, yeah, it recognizes. So you have now this documentary about the most expensive train of the world. You can hit the buy now button, for example to just purchase a ticket right from the from the TV screen oh, while so watching that, the document. That, all right, now we're seeing why people might want to do this. Mm -hmm. Here's information about a football match. Yeah, so you have a, an augmented interface, so you can see the formation on the on the bottom in front of you. You could put that on onto your coffee table if you want. You see all the statistics to the left and to the right. You can swipe through, get in-depth statistics on the match, and if you want to if you saw the, the goal now and you want to rewatch it, uh, above that there's a replay function where you can just see the same, um, have a replay overlay of the of that scene. Or if you're into football, which is a big thing, um, I think here, you can even get your uh, fantasy football stats. Oh. And, and That's really cool, adding yeah. that extra Whoa. context. <laughs> and w what yeah. I find so fascinating about this, interesting from like a behind the scenes standpoint, is like you're already watching something heavily produced on the screen and then you're watching this live interactive element that's I imagine heavily produced behind the scenes in order to you know replicate the players on the field how does that all work in real time to get that information on the screen so if we're talking about this sports case that you're just seeing it's a uh, we, we provide some templates that then will be fed by a data feed oh, so God. we have some some partnerships with sport data provider and they would feed live into our into our um, templates so this would be an e-commerce example. You have a commercial. You can hit the buy now, uh, the book test drive now button, and then you would be able to tap into the Facebook Messenger, and that would, for example, send a message to the next dealership that's uh, the next uh, mini dealer, and you can make a, a, an appointment for test drive. So it's all about making interactive experiences around around TV and video. So um, you hit the book test drive button. Uh, it, you will log in with Facebook, and then it will send a message to the next wow. next dealership. Right. So, what is the user experience like? Cool. Am I have do I have to hold a phone up, or what? How? What am I doing? Yeah. So you would um, potentially download the app. Um, so right now we uh, we launched uh, first time in the U.S. Uh, last week uh, with Nickelodeon. So in that case, uh, the people would download the Nickelodeon uh, Screens app, app um, where our technology was incorporated. And then uh, the moment uh, uh, you can uh, have an augmented reality experience, you just start the app, point it towards the TV, and then what happens is that all of a sudden green slime is coming out of the TV <laughs> as you're just going to see in a couple of seconds. Oh, there it is, yeah. Over. Or the blimp is coming out into the living room and you have like an amazing interactive experience. Um, you could play along. There was a basketball game where people could just play along uh, with, a, with a TV show. So this is, yeah, this is what happens. So uh, for, especially for kids are very into this kind of uh, stuff, I guess. Yeah, I could see kids doing it more than maybe adults because after a right. while, I'm going to get tired of holding the phone <clears> up <throat> or holding. I, I guess yeah. eventually maybe you'd put these in glasses. Exactly. Or right? Have some yeah. sort of a, a goggle interface for it. Yeah, that's right. It's just that um, for now, um, I mean, we've seen it with VR. Um, the hardware hurdle is just too high at this right. point. So um, we leverage uh, the infrastructure that is already in billions of people's of households. So like TV, everyone has a TV, everyone has a smartphone or right. tablet at home. 
So why not use that technology rather than relying on hardware to come become available um, some sometime in the future? Well, and it's not like now is the wrong time to do that either. Apple, Google, they've all they both. And, and I'm sure you know other companies have worked heavily in this. But from an eco, from an, uh, an OS level standpoint, they've both integrated uh, AR are into you, their you, platform. Are you using AR Kit and AR Core? Yeah. AR, so we have uh, developed our own, uh, so to speak, homegrown AR technology, which works even on uh, devices that are not supported by AR Kit and AR Core. So oh. everything that has been uh, sold over the last uh, five years. Um, but we also implement AR Core and AR Kit, which uh, uh, allow us amazing experiences. So I think everyone's seen the, the WWDC keynote on AR Kit 2, right, right. Um, which brings amazing uh, multiplayer functionalities, and we're about to incorporate that so you Ooh, can have even, uh, a multiplayer experience nice. while watching watching a TV show. So I mean, imagine the family's watching TV, and then uh, you get a different experience than 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 your your your, your daughter or so, and. You have a personalized experience. That's based on really that. cool. This is actually a nice, uh, I think, also demo. Um, it's we incorporate like live positioning data. So when you're watching a match, uh, we get the real-time positioning of every player and uh, the ball, for example. So you could basically really um, follow all the, the the whole game on your coffee table in augmented reality. I think that's kind of cool yeah, that's because. Really cool you're then seeing more detail about what's going on than mm -hmm. what you can see on the TV screen. You could Now, yeah. you, you started this in, uh, your front, you guys are at, out of Munich, you started this in Germany yeah. originally. How, what is the, what kind of acceptance, what, how has it been used and what are people's reactions to this? Uh, so we launched in, in Germany last year on a TV station called Pro7. It's the second largest network in Europe um, for a documentary format and uh, we had a one week event so every every evenings between 7 and 8 p.m. Uh, you could join the augmented reality experience uh, through that documentary and we had really amazing results so we had the, for this one week event we had um, 360,000 downloads for the application um, we know that every user was at least uh, returning for a second time on average so this uh, people are really open to this and we were ranked number one in the overall app store which shows that Wow. Everyone is really open to this new technology, and um, yeah, they, they really embrace it. So I think we're uh, really on a good track here. Uh, Nickelodeon in the U.S. Uh, showed us as well that uh, also kids are very open to this kind of technology. And I think the era of uh, consuming video as a one-way medium um, is now at a point of uh, at an inflection point where it's about creating more interactive experiences because that video experience hasn't changed over the last decades, where it's just one way. Yeah, I think the, the passive viewing experience where you get extra added content is a really neat application here. I think the thing that more that excites me a little bit more is this kind of idea of engaging with the TV content like in a game show format. Oh, wouldn't that be like, fun? You could play the game. Yeah, like yeah. Or, or a quiz show of sorts right. where you have, a, you know, you have the questions being presented on the screen. And what I you like, have the ability to select your answers and compete against other it people doesn't watching take the same up, show. It doesn't take up screen time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen All things inside. where, it, you know, slides over and it takes up. Totally. But I want to see the full screen of the game. Yeah. So this is nice because it's outside uh, the screen. Uh, I... I I also imagine advertisers are thrilled about this because it makes oh, yeah. ads interactive. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first of all, it brings, brings transparency to the whole TV advertising um, model because right now it's, you usually pay per, per view or, or CPM. Um, and I think this kind of metrics are sort of outdated. Um, we bring t transparency. And I mean, imagine how great it would be for a brand at paying like um, for a 20 seconds or 30 seconds uh, TV commercial on air, but then have the user engage for minutes by providing that kind no of kidding. mini game, for example, yeah. you know, the, the game, uh, the, the mini car example, imagine the car is popping out and you can drive around with it in your living room or scale it to real size and ex experience the interior. I mean, all that kind of interactive experiences are not possible um, through our technology. Wow. The trick is getting people to install the app. And so I can understand yeah. why the first thing you're going to do is big flagship events with documentaries yeah. or games or whatever so that you can get people to install the app. Drive now it's installs. installed. You can easily yes. put up on the ad. Oh, by the way, f fire it up because we're going to show you yeah. something pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And then the next step for us would be to provide it all, uh, provide an SDK. It's going to be a Unity plugin where 
we then reach out to a huge developer community oh, that is able to create that kind of experiences themselves. Oh, so it's not just you with an SDK. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that was so the first cool. Step. It's, it's exactly as you said it. It was the first step to reach out to uh, 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 through the media company for our clients. But the next one will be really to bring out an SDK for Unity. So to make augmented reality accessible to, to everyone. Wow. You're in two accelerator programs. I don't. Does that mean you're twice accelerated? I don't know. The German Accelerator <laughs> Tech Winter Class 2018, Comcast, Un NBC Universal's Lyft Labs. Um, yeah. That sounds like you're busy. That's why you're in Philly. Uh, yeah, that's why we're in Philly. And yeah. you know, talking about cable providers, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, we're here in in the 48th floor of the uh, Comcast headquarters. Have an amazing view. We have awesome internet. <laughs> so. <I bet>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say um, nothing bad while you're on. I'll only say good things. No, it's things. okay. It's okay. So it's 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 a it's their corporate accelerator program, which is uh, operated by TechStars. It's powered by TechStars. Oh, TechStars so is great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a Texas program, and it's really it's it's an awesome experience. We have great access to all the Comcast people, um, and they're really supportive about this. And uh, yeah, so we're really looking forward to working on projects together. And the next one. The one that you mentioned uh, earlier is a German uh, tech accelerator uh, based in the Silicon Valley. So it's a uh, oh, program run by the government, by the German government. Um, and uh, it, it helps companies from Germany to uh, yeah, grow to the U.S. Um, and that's a really also awesome experience uh, or opportunity because I think for this kind of SDK tech platform play, it's, it's the best place to be. It's kind of interesting because in the early days of cable, I don't know if you remember this, um, they did experiments with interactive television. They tried it in Florida. Mm -hmm. They set it up. And <laughs> the problem is you have to have two-way cables. You have to have a way to get the data to the cable company and then back. And then mostly people bought stamps. It wasn't very compelling. Hmm. But now, because everybody has a smartphone with an always-on Internet connection, you've got a two-way connection without modifying the cable at all. I think this is really, really fascinating. I mean, you've maybe licked this problem that's been something the cable companies have wanted to do for decades. I bet you Comcast yeah. is very, very interested. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. also probably, hopefully, one of the reasons why we're here. So. Yeah, I would bet. <laughs> if people want to know more, they can go to augment.tv. Is that right? Right. Yes, I'm just going to hold this into, oh, okay, yeah, there's a website, this is uh, Augment, it's our product. Um, Robin's I, got I, it, man, he's he's getting all, he knows how to market now, yeah, A-U-G-M-E-N no dot TV. There we go, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Right and I love and it that you have an SDK, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's coming soon, it's coming soon, we're partnering up with a couple of selected um, first integrators, but it's coming coming soon, so stay tuned. We have uh, an, an, a newsletter uh, that you can just subscribe to, and then we will let you know as soon as we're ready to ship. Very great. Robin, congratulations. This looks yeah. cool. I can't wait Thank to play you. with it. Yeah. Uh, oh, Robin, yeah. yeah. Robin Shomoser, he is co-founder and CEO of uh, iCandy Lab and Augment TV. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to talk to you. Wow. Yeah. yeah, my only, cool. you know, I mean, of course you're going to get tired doing this. So, it, but I see for maybe a commercial, and then you start playing a game, right? And yeah, then, but and eventually, everybody agrees, right? It's got to be here at some point. Yeah, at some point, the glasses that we normally wear will have, you know, that that Terminator view where where things augment everything. Yeah, right? and you'll just so be sitting look far watching. enough down the line that happens. Right? I think it's a few years off. I mean, they're smart; they'll be in position yeah. in a few years because they got to solve the bot battery issue. Yeah. The CPU has got to be portable. It can't look like Google Glass or no. the visors. It has to look kind of like yeah, normal, normal spectacles. Yep. But but so maybe it's five or ten years. It's certainly within ten years. Your kids will be doing it. I hope so. I mean, I, I hope to have the chance to look at it. I think and, we'll be and, doing uh, it. I'll yeah, be in the home, it. but I'll be doing it. It'll be great. <laughs> when I'm in the home, I'll get to, you know... Imagine I'm somewhere I'm not. You'll have all your friends on the pictures. Look! Yeah. There's <laughs> slime coming out of the TV!